So, Alex, I don't know if you uh, saw this because this just uh, broke uh, moments ago, but President Trump's longtime lawyer, Michael D. Cohen, apparently secretly recorded a conversation with Donald Trump two months before the presidential election in which they discussed payments to a former Playboy model. This is not Stormy Daniels, who said she had an affair with uh, Donald Trump. This is according to lawyers and others familiar with the recording. So this was a recording that was seized during the raid on Michael Cohen's office. And uh, as you know, prosecutors are uh, looking into those questions um, to see if it uh, broke uh, financial, uh, excuse me, um, campaign finance laws. <laughs> now, this woman uh, was not Stormy Daniels. This was Karen McDougal, who had a, an affair with Trump in 2006, right after Melania gave birth to their son, Barron. Nice. And, uh, but her story got sold to the National Enquirer for 150 grand. That's the one they, they spiked, right? Then they spiked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they sat on it. Now, um, here's my first question for you uh, today, Alex. Mm-hmm. Um, you, are, you have done a, a tremendous amount of reporting in your career. Mm-hmm. Uh, but maybe you wouldn't know about something like this, but when you have a situation where someone tapes a random conversation, Mm-hmm. Right. Let's say you're uh, a personal lawyer for uh, your client and you've taped a, a conversation. Is it your sense that this is a one off? <laughs> <laughs> like I just uh, this is the one conversation I've decided to tape with my client who I've had for uh, over a decade. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I would I would I would feel like uh, you you might have um do that uh, more of a, as a habit than suddenly decide one morning today is the day i'm gonna tape today is the day i'm, I'm taping donald now okay so if that's the case and of course this is all uh, speculation conjecture right but let's just assume that michael cohen had a lot of tapes mm-hmm. and um the fbi seized all his stuff in his office and they've given it to the uh, Cohen's lawyers mm-hmm. to look through to confirm what stuff may be clean, what stuff may be dirty from the pr- r- perspective of, and I am using that in terms of uh, what is um, uh, what stuff may be germane and what stuff is uh, client uh, attorney privilege. Mm-hmm. And the fact that this recording uh, existed was, um, and now we don't know. We don't know uh, where this came from, but you're a reporter. Okay, so Mr. Cohen's lawyers discovered the recording as part of their review of the seized materials and shared it with Mr. Trump's lawyers. This is according to three people briefed on the matter. (laughs) Now, I don't think, you know, uh, non-reporters don't know that there are, that these terms, Mm -hmm. people briefed with the matter, they mean something like that. It, that's not anybody in the world. That means that there's a, a select group of people. And I mean, I, and I don't think people are really s- totally savvy about this. Like, mm-hmm. like just your, your average reader of the news doesn't realize like government officials means one category of people. Right. Uh, a high level advisor means a, nu- a, a distinct set of people that it could be. Yeah. So. Let me just ask you, as the, as the way this is written, Mr. Cohen's lawyers discovered recording as part of their review of seized materials, shared it with Mr. Trump's lawyers, according to three people briefed on the matter. We have nothing to say on this matter, Mr. Cohen's lawyer, Lanny D- uh, J- Davis, <laughs> said when asked about the tape. Now, now, wow. uh, just even saying those words is hey, pretty funny. What a resilient but, scumbag. Wow. Okay. So explain to people, like, how it's po- like, who could have been in that universe that told that? The, yeah. the, I mean, and, and why... We would know that Mr. Cohen's lawyers discovered the recording as part of their review. Um, uh, I, I haven't. I, mean, I only just saw this headline as I got right. off the uh, the train, but I, I I get the impression that um, okay. So if it's uh, people briefed on the matter, it's like we could be talking about Cohen's lawyers' camps uh, going with this, uh, not just to like sort of. Uh, put the screws to Trump, but also to say, like, there might be more. Um, uh, it could be the U.S. Attorney's Office, because this is going through them, right? This isn't, but... Uh, right. Yeah. But, I mean, the Mueller investigation, right? by all accounts, right? Because we know Brett Kavanaugh, for instance, w- leaked during the Ken Starr yeah, uh, yeah, investigation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, think, Mu- uh, but Mueller's people don't leak, right? That's, I mean, that's what 
it seems to be what pri- uh, you know reporters are saying in private. Now, maybe they wouldn't even say that. Well, I, that's why I was saying I thought it might be the U.S. attorney in New York who's ah, doing this, which, okay. is a, which would be because he's been referring things to them. Um, and they usually have more of a relationship. But what's the what's the byline on this? Did Haberman do this one? Along this with is uh, Matt Apuzo, Haberman, and yeah. Schmidt. Yeah. So uh, Haberman is in with you know Trump and his team, obviously. Right. Um, but yeah, it, you know, people briefed on the matter is like, you know, this was obviously done strategically and intentionally by someone to send a message, which is how you, these things usually work. Right. And, and I mean, theoretically, it could be the lawyers could be off the, lawyers, the record. Yeah. Right. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. and and so they would make an agreement. I mean, I don't think people understand this dynamic with reporters that like you can um, uh, you call a reporter and you say, like, look, I'm going to give you the entire part of this story mm-hmm. and then I'm going to go on the record only with one quote. Yeah, which oh, yeah, is yeah. I have no comment, or it's like yeah. this is very disturbing, or whatever yeah. <laughs> it is. But in the meantime, the, y- here's the whole thing. Here's, here's the whole the entire thing. story. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, yeah. That's generally how it works. Yeah. And I don't think people. I don't think people are aware. Of no, that. and it's actually it's one of the it's one of the f- uh, failings, I guess, of the of the tr- uh, traditional sort of newspaper uh style, which is that they think all these terms of art. I mean, they don't feel the need to explain them, I guess. I always feel like there should be a little bit more transparency. Even if you can't reveal who your source is, there should be a little bit more transparency about what these terms mean. It, I, it, I couldn't agree more, Alex, exactly. It's totally... <laughs> I, I find it to be totally fascinating because I've been doing this, like professionally yeah. reading the news for almost 15 years now. And um, when I went through particularly the Cernovich story, mm. um, I I had friends who were helping me in terms of negotiating with the reporters oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. D- d- you know like if what what time can this be published yeah. what time um you know i'm going to give you uh, x y or z and are you going to give me i mean this is all a negotiation yeah and these and, and and these three reporters and all the people involved in this they all have terms that they have already probably worked out mm. and then they make specific ones for each stories yeah and the the point of that is that this is michael cohen because clearly they knew the recordings existed before they reviewed them, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because Michael Cohen did it. He and did it. Yeah. <laughs> he probably mentioned to his lawyers, like, "Oh, I have one recording, or maybe I have boxes and boxes of recordings." Mm-hmm. But this is the tamest one. Yeah. I mean, Giuliani is in this story saying, "Look, there's no, yeah, there's a recording, but there's yeah. no specifics. Like, he didn't do anything wrong here." <laughs> but this is. Michael Cohen saying definitively to Donald Trump's camp, like, I have tapes. I have tapes, yeah. Here's an example of one that's not going to get you in trouble. Yeah, yeah. And, and so this to me says that Michael Cohen is still trying to, he's not flipped. Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah. Because he, I mean, the way, and also they made a point of saying, like, um, the uh, they found it under review and shared it with Trump's lawyers and not, like, he he shared it with them. You know, it's not like Michael Cohen told the prosecutors, "Look what I have." Right. Um, he's like, oh, you know, they already they found this. Like, but we're still we can maybe keep some other stuff away from them." Exactly. <laughs> and I say that because also uh, the the trial for uh, Manafort uh, starts uh, next week. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I guess in yeah next week twenty fifth is when they start to select jury. Um, and Manafort's in prison, and he is not. He's clearly not flipped yet. Mm. I think Manafort is, um, I don't think he's just waiting for a pardon. I think he's afraid of getting killed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not I mean, joking. Yeah, that, that, that could, I mean, yeah. By who? Yeah. By uh, some of his former uh, uh, billionaire Russian oligarchs. Could end up getting very tough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, very tough. I, I, you know, like, I, I, this doesn't necessarily have any bearing necessarily on the question of collusion and whatnot. Yeah. But um, that's more like the literal mafia end of all of this story. Yeah. Well, that's what right, said. Yeah. I, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the our position is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get uh, whacked in the street. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe don't accept any tea from strangers for the next little while. I don't want to exactly. get like that uh, Chilean, uh, that Chilean queer that got blown up in D.C. in the seventies. So. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, so. Okay, so this has all my, been my, like, uh, I guess, uh, my uh, Maddow attempt at getting to the main story, <laughs> which is, um, which is th- this week, I think, has been a turning point in terms of the level of credulity, credulity mm-hmm. that a significant 
subset of the sort of the media, I think, and just sort of broadly, um, America, I think, has started to take the Russian collusion stuff a little more seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean uh, uh, speak to that, because I'm curious as where you are, because I'm looking at this piece by this guy from Politico, and he's, you know, he's Politico, and, you know, I, I, I don't really know his work that well. I think he was at BuzzFeed. I don't know. Um, why I'm no longer a Russia Gate skeptic. Um, and wh- where are y- you on this? I'm curious as to, like, what, because, and I have to say, Part of what has influenced my my thinking significantly has been reading Marcy Wheeler, mm-hmm, who yeah. I I think has, I think is probably the most credible voice on on this that exists, at least from my perspective. Yeah. Uh, because having known her past work and and you know where she sits, sort of politically. Right. 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 Um, and then. She just coincidentally was on two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, a la- maybe it was last week. No, it was, no, it was a, it was a yeah, week ago yeah. Wednesday. And then all of this, all of the, yeah. the, the, you know, yeah. and yeah. since he that's happened, happen. the, the 12 uh, GRU uh, indictments, uh, Donald Trump um, talking about EU being a foe, then meeting with Putin without a, um, uh, anybody else in the room, then the press conference. Yeah. Then we have... And we'll play this in a moment. Dan Coates is uh, sort of like <laughs> two or three days of like the lights are flashing red. Uh, and, when, and also in, in Trump being on with Jeff Glar uh, the day before yesterday, we covered it yesterday and complaining like nobody talked about all the positive developments that came out of the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> the meeting We're, that it like was just none us, us in. Know. Yeah. None of us could literally know. <laughs> and, and I add, I will also add to this the um, arrest and indictment of uh, 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 Maria Butina, is that her name? Yeah, Maria, yeah, Bertina, who, yeah. Who, who appears to be a Russian operative of some sorts yeah. and could very well have been a conduit to bringing the NRA millions of dollars. Yes. <laughs> and we should say, people have been talking about this story with the NRA for some time. The NRA sort of spent a significantly a lot, lot more, a lot more in this than cycle do. than they normally do. Yeah. Um, which yeah. is counterintuitive because this did not look like a good cycle for them. No. Right? Yeah. I mean, nobody thought going into that election, like, oh, we're going to... Yeah, no one was like, this is our re- this is the restoration. Like, no one was like, Donald will lead the... Yeah. I well, mean... They, they knew it was a big one. The... Uh, but yeah, my uh, f- since forever I've thought like, and I think other other people have said this too. Like collusion, um, it's like a term that, as we as Trump has done, like you can twist it to that it, he you can get out of it meaning almost anything, right? But I think it's like it always was sort of clear to me that like the Russians um, wanted Trump to win, were willing to help him, and that people in his camp were willing to accept that help, like either with plausible deniability about where it came from or openly welcoming it, knowing exactly where it came from. And that might be where the question has like lied. <laughs> but uh, so then, you know, what, like with Trump personally, um, <clears throat> like, yeah, he, uh, like Russian banks were like handling, like were giving him money for years and like he was doing, like trying to get projects done in Russia and like when American banks didn't really, really want to deal with him. So, um, all of this stuff and it, like the the events have been shocking to me but i found like the the blake uh, uh piece about why he's no longer a skeptic like um a lot of these things i feel like were like the pieces were there i guess um and uh uh but yeah i mean it, it is it's remarkable to see them being put out in the open like that but yeah i mean wh- i'm going to push you a little bit further because it, it, i mean here's the thing i from from day one, I felt like this is uh, Trump. There's definitely money laundering that's been yeah, going I think on there been for a long money time, laundering and yeah, and it's quite possible that um, Trump thought. And by Trump, I mean those close to him. Like I don't know how much he is on top of any of this, right? Yeah, but um, they were dealing. They thought they were just dealing with the normal, uh, you know. Macedonian uh, hackers <laughs> that they use to get credit card numbers at different times or something like that. Yeah. Um, but that was part of the target hack. But the idea that there is there is a quid pro quo is really the question. Yeah. Right? And and it did um, did 
the um, did the Trump organization know that they were getting help? And did they also say, like, we will do something we'll do for something. you? Well, wasn't I mean, that kind of the I most mean, shocking part of what Marcy Wheeler said, actually? Yes. She implied, like, serious geostrategic deals. Like, right, yeah. We're going to restate. We're going to shift Syria policy fundamentally. We're going to, like, she said things that were far beyond what you would assume, like, will help you out with, a, you know, capital or whatever your personal self-interest is but like actual real deals that have made yes impact. that that they yeah. may have a vested interest in too right. i mean this, right. this, oh, this yeah, is the way right, it goes right, right? right? like people yeah. should know right. it's like in these type of situations it's not just like hey um uh, you know we'll help you get elected and you're going to do this other thing for you that's also not going to pay off it's like no, you, we're going to get you some insight. You're going to you're going to all take a piece of this. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, like yeah. you you show up with the car, and we're all going to share in the bank loot. Yeah, we're right? all going to yeah. share in the new <laughs> pipelines that we have a stranglehold over Europe on as we destroy the EU and NATO. There yeah. does yeah. seem yeah. to be though. I mean, there's also this sort of this weird thing of like. Trump does a very bad job of covering his tracks. Yes, he does. Yeah, like, yeah. and I think it's just because he's partly crazy. Yeah. Well, this is so that, so actually so when I I I fully believe that in you know it's like when they always were like oh we took the meeting about it was about adoption and it's like that's not you're not like making yourself sound innocent because we know what that means like we know <laughs> right. the entire adoption thing is is about like letting your oligarchs do whatever they want but um, uh, I think that it's oh yeah like I'm I. I I would easily believe that they made grand geostrategic promises and that what we have seen in the flailing since then is this realization that they can't maneuver around the the government that they put in place to accomplish what they want entirely. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like they can like Trump is doing everything in his personal power to like so discord in the EU and then meeting and then you know if if Putin is chastising him like maybe it's just about like well, you're not actually delivering on all these things that we actually wanted, you know? And so in, in the Richard Wolf book and whatever, everybody's yeah. skeptical. I bought most of it, but there's a, a part where basically Bannon is livid because Ivanka and somebody else that I don't remember has done a PowerPoint where they've basically just shown kids being gassed in Syria. And Trump just starts going, the foam at the mouth. The foam at the mouth. That's all he can talk about. And he decides they need to do airstrikes in Syria. And Bannon is out of his mind pissed. Yeah. And I thought of that with Marcy Wheeler because I was like, maybe there's a whole other level of being pissed about that <laughs> right. in light yes, of what yeah, she's yeah, saying, yeah. you know, and what you're saying. <laughs>